All right, guys, got another old one for you. This video is from approximately 2017, quite a few years ago, but uh, it's got some good info in it. So this is a continuation of the barrel dialing indicator video I did here a week or so ago. So if you haven't seen that one, check that one out. Um, and of course, as always, if you see something on here that's you don't agree with, you feel free to roast me. It's good for the algorithm. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't do things quite this way. There's some stuff you still do the same way, but uh, you know, cutters and stuff like that we change up, so we use different things, but still some good info, so you guys uh, watch, and if you haven't already, subscribe, and uh, check out the video. Hope you enjoy. Alright, so the, here are our thread dimensions for our chamber end of our barrel that we're going to be using. These are standard dimensions that can be found on the internet pretty much anywhere. Uh, just do a quick search for 1917 Enfield threads, and this should pop up if you're wondering. But these are square threads, and they're 10, 10 threads per inch, but they're square. So they're perfectly square. They're half, uh, 50 thousandths wide, 50 thousandths deep. And our major diameter of our threads is 1.125 inches. Our minor diameter of our threads is 1.085 inches. However, those numbers may vary a little bit for each receiver so I always fit mine to each receiver but that's you know those are those numbers should fit on just about any end field if you want if you, otherwise they're gonna be a little tighter if you want them to fit on your receiver only um, so a cutter threads and I am gonna do my darndest to not put a relief cut in here because then if I ever want to set it back I can just keep threading and cut some of this off and then before we chamber we're going to cut a 45 degree cone in our barrel in the chamber end so that's the feeding cone and then after that we'll chamber it and then the last step to this whole process is there's an extractor cut over here but we're not to that yet so all right <clears throat> so i got a high speed steel cutter lathe bit in here and uh i'm just going to face the outside off i might have to change I think I have a negative rake on there, so I might have to re grain this bit, but we'll take a test cut here and see. Cutting all right. All right, so it's cutting okay. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna start laying out everything. I'm going to mark our 800 thousandths depth, and then we can cut our major diameter of our tenon, a depth mic. And I'm gonna mark slightly under 800 thousandths. So then that'll get us the depth we need. Here's a digital caliper. We'll see where we're at. Should be one and a quarter, pretty dang close. Our outside diameter here is 1.246. So I'm going to start out taking 100 thousandths by 800 thousandths. And then that'll give it us pretty dang close. And then we can kind of dial in from there. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit. I'm going to come here and just put a little line in my 800 thousandths is. That'll allow me to touch off to and zero this guy out. So there I zeroed my cross slide. I'm actually going to go in a little tad bit deeper here. Give me a little reference point. looking good. Let's just take a skim cut here and see how close this barrel is on the outside. Just for my own curiosity, I like to do this every once in a while. So it's probably a good two, three, four thousand south, but don't matter. So I'm actually going to engage my power feed here. At a slower speed. 10,000 is cut. So 
slow back down. That was a little too quick. It's actually a 20 thousandths cut, so. Adjust that a little bit. Left a nice finish, but. Not getting the greatest chips. I need to recut my bit, but there's a hundred thousands. Stringy. Nobody likes stringy. Left a decent finish though, so let's double check it here with a micrometer. One point one six. Point one two eight. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip that receiver down to the action and then we're going to start measuring on that thing. Remember when I said earlier that those numbers I gave for the tenon are specced for if you want this barrel to fit on any 1917 Enfield receiver? Well, they are all a little bit different. And so I measured, uh, we should have done this before we cut this, but we're still good. Um, I measured this receiver. So the threads don't come all the way out to the end, so you can kind of get in here and measure. Sorry, you can't see that very well. You can measure the inside diameter, and you can really easily measure the outside diameter. But I measure this one at about inch 30, or inch 0 0.130. And you can stick this thing on there, maybe not quite 330 three seconds of an inch. And anyways, it fits on there nice. And pretty snug, it doesn't wobble at all. So, th I mean, this isn't a gauge, but kind of is. So I measured this at 1.130. I might be uh, 1.129, but I'm in that range. So I'm gonna leave this, because I think that that's gonna get us pretty close. We can always come back and skim the top of these threads off. That's not a big deal. If we need to take more off later, we can do that very easily. But the next thing that I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start cutting these. Well, I'm going to double check my depth for my tenon. Make sure that's 800 thousandths. And we can do that right now. And I'll get the, uh, just the crappy, see how far I am here. 730. So i got to go a little deeper there. And then when I get to my absolute depth, I'll bring in this guy in here. And that was priority set at 800,000. So you can see we're, you know, about 70,000 off there. We got to go yet. So I'm going to cut that quick, and then we can start cutting our threads. In order to get that depth that I want to get, I simply set up a test indicator here, or dial indicator, and I'm zeroed out on my shoulder here, and I'm going to dial in, what did I say, 70,000? So we're going to cut another 70 thousandths off of here, and uh, that'll give us our shoulder depth. And I'm going to actually go to like 60, 65, double check it, and then I'll come in for my final cut. So I'm actually going to reset that. 
because I'm touching now, now I'm going to go in 60. And then we'll come back and we'll double check everything. So there's 60. I'm going to stop. We'll measure it. And I'm pretty dang close. Fifteen, so I'll dial in another ten, and then we'll do the final five. There's ten. Sorry, I'm trying to not block your guys' view here. So that is five thousands under. So I'm just going to go ahead and do five. Probably use a little oil. And then I'm going to pull this guy straight out to give us a nice square shoulder. There we go. So there is our tenon, and now we can start to cut our threads. So now that we're set up for threading, what I'm going to do is kind of show you how I go about doing this. This is another, uh, I got my Mighty Mag set up here for my carriage. So I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to throw my, well I'll throw my half nut, but I'm not going to stop my lathe, I'm just going to pull straight out so I'm not going to have a relief cut. So it's going to happen, this will be moving along, it'll go by once, go by a second time, and right there I'll disengage a half nut, pull out on my cross slide. And if I'm quick enough, I shouldn't crash into the shoulder. I've yet to do that. There is the little cutter that we will be using. You can see there's my finger. It's not very big. You have to be careful with these. This is one I ground. You can also buy them. Uh, they are very fragile, so don't be taking heavy cuts with those. And then when we're doing square thread cuts, we don't touch a compound. You can swing your compound over and use that for a feed, but everything takes place in the cross slide because everything is straight in or straight out. There's no, there's no angles with square threads. It's 90 degrees, so straight in, straight out. Um, it's super simple, and the rest of it's just the same as threading any other thread. I just measured my receiver one more time and my receiver inside diameter of my thread says 1.070 which is 15 thousandths under what the specs call for. So what I'm going to do is being that the threads theoretically are supposed to be 50 thousandths deep I'm going to start at zero here and cut 50 thousandths see where I'm at and I'm just going to take you know thousands or two at a time until my receiver will screw onto this guy. If I get past where I think 170, well I'll stop at where, before I think where 170 will be and I'll double check my outside diameter and then we can, we can adjust either one however we see fit. So we're going to start threading here. So I'm just going to take a quick scratch pass just to verify everything is set up the way I want it to be set up. I'll put some blue dye in there for you guys so you can actually see it. threads per inch. Alright, so now we should be ready to thread. Everything looks good. And we'll just go ahead and get rolling here.
I'm doing about five thousandths per pass, which is a pretty hefty cut on that flat little bit there, but. All right, one thing I'm going to do here is just lightly hit this outside with a file in case I got any burrs or anything. You can see I'm just not even really taking any of the... taking anything off of there. All right. So then we're going to blow it off with air. Make sure everything is off of there. Looks good. Now I can test fit her action and see if it fits. So it's not going yet. And come through here and make a tiny little relief cut right at the end here. That's a little better. There we go. So, all right, side diameter is pretty dang close. Here we go. Thread is act. Action is threaded on there. So as you can see here, move this out of the way. Threads on nice and snug, doesn't move. I'll have to double check my. There we go. So I got a tiny little gap there, but I'm gonna have to come there and clean it up. But there we go, there's the receiver threaded on there. So it takes a little finesse, and we can check and see what my major diameter ended up being here. It was supposed to be an inch 125. Is that an inch 121 right there? So it was under the specs, and that guy is tight on there. If I would have did inch 125, it wouldn't have fit. So, all right. So there we go. This guy's on there, and it's nice and tight on the shoulder. All right. So there are our square threads, and as you can see, we got just a flat face back here. And I did make a little relief cut back here. Next thing we're going to do is cut the cone. 